Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to get started with Vue.js. Uh, it's an elegant and powerful framework to build user interfaces. Now there's many ways to get started with Vue.js and they, they have a little command line tool that does a really great job of walking you through all your development preferences to create a starter project, such as whether you prefer Babel or TypeScript or Webpack or Browserify. It's Vue.js is really flexible and can work with all of those things. But rather than overwhelming you all with all those options, I'm just going to show you how I generally like to build uh, Vue.js components. I'm also going to stop calling it Vue.js and just call it Vue. So the first thing we're going to do is create a good old-fashioned index.html file. And in this file, we're going to have a div tag with the ID of app. Now, Vue is really good. If you only want to replace a single element in your app, you can. Um, Otherwise, if you wanted to create your entire app using Vue, uh, you can do it this way. Now, the next piece we're going to add is a script tag uh, that's going to point to our bundle that our development tool is going to be building for us as we create this Vue app. Now, we're going to go to our command line, and we're going to install some dependencies. The first thing we need is Vue.js itself. And so I'm going to type in npm install Vue.js and then um, dash dash save to save it to our package.json file. The next dependency we'll need is a, uh, a dependency called Vueify, um, and this will tell our um, build tool on how to read the Vue components themselves. Now we can go over into our package.json, and we can go into our start script and tell our build tool, I'm using Budo here, and tell our build tool here to use the, um, the Vueify transform. Uh, by specifying the, the T option here. And what this will do is it will tell Budo or Browserify what it's using under the hood. Um, it will tell it how to read a, a view component. Now, if Budo and Browserify and this development setup is confusing to you, um, I'll put a card up in the corner to a video I did earlier uh, that walking you through on how this development setup works. Otherwise, you can go to github.com shama let's write code and you can scroll down here and I have in the README here, all about this development setup and getting started with it. Now, there's one more piece of config we have to add to our package JSON here. Uh, Vue comes with a bunch of different flavors, uh, depending on whether you're using ESM, CommonJS, or you know just requiring or directly um, add through a script tag. So we want to say when we require uh, Vue here, what we're going to do is we're going to look into the the Vue package in the dish folder, and we're going to use the Vue uh, common.js. Um, to use the because we want to use common JS for this project. Oh, I lied. There's one more configuration thing that I forgot here. We want to make sure that our entry point is index.js, but we are creating a file called bundle.js that our index file here is loading here. Otherwise, our app wouldn't work. Okay, with all that out of the way, we're finally ready to write some actual code. So I'm going to go here and write index.js, and we are going to require view require Vue, and now we can use Vue to replace that uh, element, that app element. And so we do that by saying el, and we specify the selector. And since I gave it the ID app, we can use hashtag app. And now Vue will control um, that element. So let's go ahead and start up our server here with npm start. Go over to the file, refresh the page. And you notice that nothing's rendered on the page, but our app is now controlled by Vue. So let's create a component to actually render something. I'm going to create a file called app.view. Now the .view file extension lets our build tool know, and that Vueify dependency we installed, it lets it know that it's a Vue component, a standalone single file component. So in this component, we can use the template tag to specify the HTML that will make up our component. And we're just going to do something simple. We'll just say div tag and hello. So now we're going to go over to our app entry point, and we're going to require our app, require.slash app.view. And when our app renders, we're going to supply this function here. And so when the, when the app renders, what we want to do is we want to return and use our app function, or our, sorry, our app component here. So now when we refresh the page, we get hello. So now I'm going to be that guy. Wow, that is a lot of work just to render a div tag. So let's make our component dynamic by adding a script section to our component. And we're going to export out this object that corresponds to our component. And one of the properties on here is data. And this is a function in which we can return an object of properties. And these will be properties that we can use within our template. 
So one of these properties I want to add is a array of bears here. So we'll say bears, grizzly, um, polar, and uh, brown. So now we have this array of bears. We can now use it here in our template. So I'm going to create a UL tag. Close that UL tag. I'm going to create an LI tag. And now I'm going to use a special attribute or a directive is what they call it with Vue.js called V4. And this will create a for loop. So we'll say bear and bears. That will loop through our, uh, our list of bears here. And it will give us this bear uh, within this tag that we can print out. So what this is going to do is going to create an li tag for every single bear that we have in our list. Go here and refresh the page and you see we have our list of bears. Very cool. But now we want to add a bear to our list. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a button here. And we'll say add bear. Close that button up. And we're going to add a click handler here. So we're going to use at. And we're going to specify a method that we're going to call here. So we'll say we'll call this method add bear. So now we can go down here and add that method by adding a property called methods. And we'll add this function in that when this button's clicked, it will call this method here. And this method will add a new bear to our bears list here. So we're going to get this bears and we're going to push a new bear onto our array here. So we'll say new bear. Save that. And now when we refresh our page, and go here and click our button, we get new bears being added to our list and automatically rendering um, new LI tags. Now, I like this list of bears, but it's currently stuck in my app component. I'd rather it be its own component so I can use it anywhere in my app as many times as I want. So let's create another component. We'll call it uh, bearList.view. And in here, we'll create a template tag. And let's go over into our app and copy out our bear list to use within our bear list component instead. Now we still want the bear list to live in our app and we want to pass it into this bear list component. So what we're going to do is add a script section to this component. Module exports. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify the properties or props that you can pass into this component. And so one of those properties is going to be bears. Uh, to print out our list of bears. So now if we want to use this bear list component in our app, we need to go over here and require our bear list. So we'll say bear list require dot slash bear list dot view. Then we can add this component to our app component by specifying a component property down here. So we'll call this bear list and we'll use the bear list component that we have required in. So now that we have this bear list component available in our app, we can simply use it like an HTML tag here where we say bear list. And we're going to use colon because we're going to pass in a property to this bear list. And this will be bears. And the property we're going to pass in is our bears here in our data here. And now when we refresh the page, you'll notice that the app works just the same as it did before. But now we have this bear list component that we can copy and paste throughout our app and use in multiple places. Now I'm using this casing for my components and you're able to use whatever casing you want. So if you rather use uh, bear dash list, you can do it that way. And then you can update your components here to do bear dash list. Uh, but I prefer it uh, with this casing, but please use whatever casing uh, that you prefer. Now the last thing we want to do is to know when any one of our bears have been clicked in the list. And an easy way to do this is to add a click handler here to our, uh, our bear list. But the problem is, is that Vue is going to add that click handler to our bear list component itself when we want to listen to the native DOM event that gets bubbled up from all the clicks that happen on these li tags. And so to do that, we can add what's called a modifier and say dot .native, and this will use the, uh, the native event. So now anytime one of these bears are clicked, we're going to call this method called growl. And so let's go down here to our methods and I'll add this growl method in here. And we'll console log out the event that it gets called with. And so now as we refresh our page and click each of these bears, you can see that we get an event for each of the bears that have been clicked. But what if instead we wanted our bear list component here to kind of handle these clicks a little bit more inside before submitting it out to the app component. So let's add a click handler to each of our li tags here. And this is going to call a method that we're going to add called click. So let's go down here and add the method. Method click. 
And we want to specify which bear was clicked. And since we have access to this bear variable here um, in our loop, we can use that here as the first parameter in our click. And we get the bear. But we also still want to have the event because it's useful. And so there's a special property called dollar sign event that will give us the native event from this click. And so we can get that event there. So now let's build our message that we want to write out. So we'll say message and we'll have the bear and we'll say bear has growled. Now we're ready to send this message out of our uh, bear list component and up to our app. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call this dollar sign emit to uh, emit this event. And we're going to emit an event named click. And we're going to send this message as well as continue to send this event that we're passing down uh, from the original click. So now we can go up back to our app components and we can go ahead and remove the native because we're no, no longer listening to the native event, but we're rather listening to the event that the, uh, the bear list component will emit. And we name that event uh, click. And so when something has been clicked, we'll call this growl function as well. And we'll get our message first and our event second. And so now when we console log this out, refresh our page and click any of these, you can see the grizzly has growled. Click on polar, the polar has growled. Now this is only a fraction of what Vue.js can do, but hopefully it's enough to get you building some really cool components. And if it is, then share the video and help others start building some components too. Uh, and if you want to see more videos, then uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.